South Africa's unemployment rate has come out and it's quite good news actually. What is, it, what is the headline? Well the headline sounds good anyway. Let's have a look. It's um, the official jobless rate slowed to 24.9% of the labour force in the second quarter of 2012 down from 25.2% in the first quarter. In the studio with me is Michael Bagram from Bagram's Attorneys and he's a partner at that organisation. Michael, I suppose this is um, a step in the right direction, isn't it? Yes, it's starting to look better and yes, we're still seeing unemployment in certain sectors such as manufacturing, which is a bit sad, mm. but it is starting to look better and the graphs are looking better. There seems to be a bit of an uptick altogether and this is maybe good news. Um, the last time I had a look at it, um, obviously from the first quarter, but the first quarters traditionally always do go down. Uh, we build up to a Christmas fever and then it goes down traditionally anyway. So we are looking a bit better and I've been having a look at Stats SA report and there seems to be good news around the corner. Yes. I don't want to get too excited, but from a business point of view, I think this is nice. Mining is growing. Um, obviously, government and community and social services are always growing. Well, let me have let me give you the, the figures as they presented by Stats yeah. we've, been, we've created 322,000 jobs in the past year. That's good news. It's not enough, but it's a step in the right direction. Since uh, quarter one 2001, it says we've had six consecutive courses of growth more people employed okay quarter one to quarter two sorry about all these stats but quarter one to quarter two of this year community and social services increased their um, employed people by 121,000 yeah now that's great but I don't think it's, it's exactly what the economy needs no it isn't because we're taking money out of the fiscus to pay people who are then putting a little bit back into the fiscus it's not good but yes it is good so it's only one third so let's not knock it too much mm. Um, means that we've had two thirds of just over 200,000 in real jobs being grown, which is good. Um, and I, for one, often uh, try and attack these, these statistics, but I think this is good news all round mm. in the sense that it's going to send a message out to the business community let's start releasing a bit of money to create more jobs because things are starting to happen. Yeah, if exactly. mining is building up, then they've obviously moved away from this. Uh, the negative political speak yes. and they're starting to employ again which is good news and um, the other thing that we're seeing is on the back even of these negative labor dis debates in parliament uh, the business community is starting to say or even manufacturing is saying let's let's do something about it um, i don't think the message is entirely rosy but it, it is moving so Compared to the rest of the world, compared to Europe, we've at least got more jobs instead of losing jobs. So we're on the right side of the graph. Yes, indeed. Yeah, whether it's uh, skewed too far into the non-productive, so-called non-productive, is another matter. But let's have a look at a couple of the other numbers that di did increase. A couple of the other sectors that did employ more people: construction, an extra twenty-six thousand. Michael, yes. mining, an extra twenty-one thousand. Okay, so that's that's also quite good because the construction sector has been beleaguered ever since the end of all the World Cup contracts. It's been in a horrible space. But here's some bad ones now. Trade has lost 91,000 jobs. Manufacturing has lost 44,000 jobs. And also, what is that one? Another 26 minus uh, somewhere else. I can't quite work out what that one is. So it's, it's a split decision. I mean, it would be great if they were all positive. Correct. Mm. I mean, you know, trade and transport are also starting to, to look a little bit better. But trade, trade is it's decreasing, but not as badly. So I, I, don't, I don't think it's... it's a, a devastating report at all. It's a good report and I think we need to give that message out to the business community. Let's loosen our purse and let's try and grow this as much as possible. Well they're watching it now um, so we, we've got that message across. This, we, this, this is what I find a little bit confusing Michael, you're cleverer than me at, at analysing no, statistics. I don't think so. so here we go. Fourth quarter 2008, okay, there were 3.9 million unemployed souls in South Africa. Now, second quarter 2010, it had risen to 4.4 million, 4.5 million in the first quarter of 2012. So almost at a, at a record high. It fell quarter on quarter by, I think, 56,000 people. So there are 56,000 less people unemployed, if you like. So there's obviously been some statistical juggling here about the definition of unemployment and Yeah, well, you see, it, it defines how, if you define unemployment of those that are looking, actively looking for jobs, yes, yes we're about 24.9%. But if you add in the group of people who have stopped looking, 
then we're up to about 37 mm. uh, percent I think I think that's the well here we go the expanded definition yeah, yeah the expanded definition of unemployment it says here which includes people who have stopped looking for work was at 36.2 percent yeah. down from 36.6 correct so, so that's a third of the workforce by any stretch of the imagination yeah a third of the workforce who are able to work are unemployed mm. Um, of course, when you start... So some people just give up because they're disheartened well, or lazy. Yes. Or they start working as vegetable vendors on the side of the road. They're still yeah. um, known as unemployed. So people aren't just starving. Some people are still working, yeah. but they've gone informal and they're probably not paying any income tax yeah. or registering anyone of that nature. There is a big, big informal economy out there. Yes. And we mustn't lose sight of that. Um, and especially here in the Cape, we know that there's a large informal economy because even at the Chamber of Commerce, a lot of those businesses come to register with us and we find they're not registered anywhere else. Yeah. Uh, so it's an interesting factor. But if you're looking at that particular workforce, we've got a third of the people on the street. If you're looking at the people between the ages of 17 and 35, our statistics tell us it's a half of the people on the street. So one out of every two can't find a job, a formal job, that is. Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't tell us that those people aren't, in fact, creating their own employment and maybe employing friends. So uh, I, think, I think at the end of the day, we need to understand that that informal economy is going to save a lot of us in this country. Yes. Um, it, it boils down to education. If people are willing at any stage of that education to actually um, try and find their own jobs, become entrepreneurs, um, I think that's what we need. We need no, we don't need to create more jobs. We need to create more businesses. Yeah. In in this country. Well, and that's the what, what an economist famously keeps on saying whenever I speak to him. He says it's not a government's job to create uh, jobs. It's the government's job to create the, the environment. environment that yeah. creates jobs. The, the 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 policies and the structure that Correct. will create jobs. And I think that's lost on many people. Well, if you create a million small businesses, uh, you're going to have five million new jobs instantly. So that's, that's the route to go, obviously. Unfortunately, the kids in the schools are still saying, I want to be a fireman and a policeman, um, I want to be a doctor and a lawyer. Broadcaster. <laughs> Broadcaster. But they should be, in fact, saying, I want to go out there and, and I've got an idea, I want to be an entrepreneur, I want to start off. And in fact, our government has actually tried, they're trying to pay that path to say that we have got money for people that want to go down that route. Mm. Um, I, I know there's a big argument at the moment, and I don't want to get into the politics as to what they're going to do with this money that they've earmarked for, for the youth um, to go into jobs, but they've now slightly changed the tune. They've turned it a little bit and said that we want to give people who want to give people money who are willing to, to work and can't find work. We want to, they want them to register. But I think they should actually move it a bit and say, if you're prepared to actually start a business, let's make it easier for you to start that business. That's exactly right. Exactly what will happen, I think, but it's just taking too long. It's proceeding at a glacial pace. Michael, we'll leave it there, but the general message is that this is a fairly decent step in the right direction. I'm excited. Good, very yeah. good. Michael, Thank thanks you. so much for your time Thanks this very lunchtime. much. That's Michael Bagram, who is from Bagram's Attorneys, and he's a partner at that firm.